Awesome. Hey, thank you guys so much for being here. My name is Chad. Um, hey, Rylan, come on in. Rylan and Caitlin, uh, you guys are late, but we'll just wait for you to sit down. Yeah. Also, um, whoever is editing this, if you could just include this. Um, this is this, a Fawcett family. They're walking in a little bit late. Um, no, my name is Chad. I, um, I am from Olympia, Washington. I'm originally from Tri-Cities. Well, I'm originally from everywhere, but I'm originally from Tri-Cities, moved up to Northwest. I worked at New Life Church in Renton as a kids associate, associate kids guy there for a while. Um, helped with their Maple Valley campus. Uh, and then I moved to Olympia, and I'm now at a church called Evergreen Christian Community. I was the uh, children's pastor there uh, for a year, a year and a half is all, I guess. And then... Um, Noah Naipo, he's the, the big Hawaiian guy with the Seahawks shirt, uh, Seahawks jersey on. He is now our children's pastor, and he is um, far better than I ever was as a kid's pastor, so he's, he's doing a great job. Um, my role now at Evergreen is family pastor, so essentially I kind of oversee all the kids and youth, so from birth to um, seniors in high school. However, um, thankfully we have an awesome, awesome team on the kids' side of things that um, I just kind of coached through a couple things. So um, I am not as knee-deep. Knee-deep, is that the right word? Is that right? Is that a saying, knee-deep? Yeah. I'm not as deep into it every single week as you guys are. Um, however, I do get to kind of see from, from my perspective as I get to coach Noah and, and his team throughout. So um, this workshop is, uh, uh, and I mean, one more thing, I guess. I uh, get to do the youth ministry, so middle schoolers, which are the most awkward, awesome people in the world, um, and high school students uh, at Evergreen. And um, yeah, how many of you guys here are, uh, are on staff at your church? Okay, so like pastors, directors, awesome. How many of you guys are volunteers? How many are here because somebody just made you come here and you don't really know what your role is? Uh, awesome. I was, I was thinking about Caitlin, and she's like, am I a volunteer? Uh, um, so this workshop is um, about how to do ministry outside of Sunday mornings. Obviously, it's in the title of everything. And uh, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk for, I'm going to try to do like 20-ish minutes, and then I'm going to give you guys time to um, even collaborate with one another. Um, if you'd like to do it on your own, you're welcome to. Um, but a lot of times we get all these awesome ideas um, from from conferences and breakouts and that kind of thing and and we go to three and we go to a few sessions and then we go home and we try to like implement it all and we're because we're trying to implement so much we implement nothing and so uh, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to kind of workshop the workshop if you will um, so every single week on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights or whatever your ministry layout looks like you get one to two hours with your with your kids. So um, whether that's on a Sunday morning, unless they're like pastors' kids, then you get like five hours with them on a Sunday, and then like they end up in your office the other hours of the weeks when they have half days at school. Um, so you get a lot of time. You you don't get a lot of time with your students um, in the gatherings and and uh, and on Sunday mornings or Wednesdays, whenever that might be your midweek type of things. You get one to two. Now I think there are 168 hours. I, I know this because I looked it up for this purpose. That's not like I just know random facts like that. Um, I think there are 168 hours in a week. So that means there are 166 more hours that the kids are not with you. All right. So we're like, all right, we're going to change the spiritual formation of these kids and we're going to change their lives and we're going to do it in one two hundredth of the time that they are awake and alive. Um, if you take another 60 of those hours, is it 60-ish hours, um, they are going to be sleeping throughout, throughout the week. So there's about 100 hours in a week that they are awake and they are doing things besides kids ministry. Now, I had this like aha moment. Um, I, I'm newly married, which is awesome. Marriage is great. Uh, these guys are newly married. Any other people kind of newly wed-ish? No? Cool. Just me and Rylan and Caitlin. Um, and, but right before the wedding, we were trying to like work extra and save a little bit, a little bit extra money so we could do some more fun things on our honeymoon. And uh, my now wife was nannying a, a family in our church. She was nannying for their family. They had three kids and 
their family is way busy and they're running we're running them around to all these different extracurricular activities like they got to go to piano they got to go like taekwondo and then they got to go from taekwondo to dance i'm like how are those things like the same person and like they're doing all these different things and then like you know on the schedule of things that they're 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 doing one of the things is okay now get them to church and then pick them up from church at this time and i had this like aha moment and i thought oh my god i'm like oh my goodness like People sometimes can, especially kids who are that busy, and I feel like there are a lot of kids who are that busy, it's quite possible that they view church and their, their kids' ministry or their youth group, whatever that might be, and even adults, as another extracurricular activity, wow. right? So, you yeah, Taekwondo, it teaches you like honor and respect. Piano, it teaches you how to play piano, probably teaches you some other awesome things. What's that? Patience. Yes, patience. <laughs> um, soccer, it teaches you endurance. Church teaches you how to like love people and treat people nicely. And I'm thinking to myself, like, it's church is way more than an extracurricular activity. Yeah. It's it's a uh, it's a place where we come, and yes, we learn how to do those things. But it's because of who we are that we come uh, together. And so, how do we maximize that one to two hours so that we can train them up uh, for the other hundred and uh, 66 hours in the week. Yes, thank you, whoever said that. Um, in our youth ministry, we have a lot of people who play sports, um, which is both awesome and not awesome because they play sports and they don't come to church, but it's awesome because they're out on the mission field. Um, and uh, one of the analogies that I use is the the church, or our youth group, is a locker room, okay? Anybody play sports growing up or have, has ever been in a locker room, like at a halftime thing? So... I always use the analogy of the, the locker room analogy is what I call it. And uh, the, the church or the youth ministry, the kids ministry, whatever that might be, is the locker room. So that's where you come in. You all sit down. You're a team. We're all on the same team. We're all, our, our number one goal is to make the, mission of Je- the, the name of Jesus famous. The number one goal in basketball is to score as many points in that hoop over there, not that one, but that one over there, um, or to, to score as touchdowns or to not miss a field goal um, in overtime and tie the game like the Seahawks and Cardinals did. Um, yeah. Um, but we all have the same mission. So the locker room, we come in and we get the game plan. And so um, my goal is not for students to leave on a Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Sunday morning, whatever it might be, and for them to, to walk away and say, man, I can't wait for youth group next week. Or I can't wait for kids' church next week. If that's the response, then I've actually failed in my, my, my job. My hope is that when they leave, that they would, they would actually say, uh, man, I can't wait for school tomorrow to take what I just learned and uh, help my friends understand that uh, on their own level. Or I can't wait to get home and tell my mom and dad about what I learned and, and to, to do these types of things. So, um, so I've got seven things, because seven is a godly number, um, that are decently practical. Um, a, lot of them, uh, a lot of them won't like, bog you down, because I know that time is a valuable commodity in all of our lives and, and ministry and so a lot of them won't bog you down I'm not trying to add like more things for you to do and like for your to-do list or anything like that um, what I want to do is I want to just put these out there some of them you probably already heard or some of you maybe have thought of um, and they might just be a reminder but I want you to take these and implement whatever ones you think um, would be would be good for your ministry my my hope and there's a uh, there's a, a book called uh, Church Unique, if you haven't read it, it's awesome, and it talks a lot about how, um, I mean, in the digital age, we look at other churches, and we're like researching, man, they, the way that they do that is awesome, so we're going to like carbon copy it and put it over here. It doesn't work like that, because the environment that you're in, the neighborhood that you're in, the cities that you're in, it's completely yeah. different. So it's important for us to not walk away and say, man, all those things that Chad just talked about are so amazing and genius, because they are. I'm just kidding. They're not. Um, not to walk away with all of those and say, like, I'm going to implement every single one of them. But choose them, change them, use your own, talk amongst your team. Um, that's what the, the end is going to be for, um, to say, okay, what are some even more different ways to, to implement? So, um, First one is, uh, first, get organized. First, get organized. You're like, okay, that does not 
have anything to do with reaching kids past Sunday morning. Um, it actually has everything to do. I, um, about a year and a half ago, I, uh, our, our youth ministry admin left uh, to go uh, to move back home. And uh, I had an opportunity to hire a middle school person or hire an admin. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to hire a middle school person. Um, and I'll do like my admin work all by myself because like I kind of like prided myself on thinking that I was pretty administrative. I am not administrative as I learned. And uh, now we have a youth admin on the team and it has changed my life forever because we have these things, I think they're called databases. Is that the word, right? Yeah, databases. And like we have texting services and all these different things. And I'm like realizing in my, in my brain, like I, I can know with confidence that if my lead pastor... Uh, comes up to me and he says, he says, hey, uh, I saw this family uh, and their kid's name was this. And, and I just saw his name text, so that's why I remember. But could you get me their information? Because I remember having a conversation with their dad. Can't remember their, their name or anything like that. Uh, I'd like their, their address uh, or their email address and their uh, a phone number for him. That would be awesome. Now, if my lead pastor comes to me, hopefully I can actually say with confidence, yeah, I have that. If I can't, then there might be a, a disconnect. Um, because one of the things we want to be able to do is we want to be able to communicate, obviously, promoting events, promoting encouragement, or not promoting encouragement, giving encouragement to parents. Um, and uh, and it, it actually will fall in, uh, in a lot of different areas that we're going to talk about here in just a second. Um, one of the, uh, the things that I am currently working on, another book that is, uh, it's not a ministry book, but it will change the way you do ministry for sure. It's called the Four Disciplines of Execution. So um, I like have a million ideas in my head of things that I want to do, and I'm always like thinking, and I have like 13 hamsters in my brain. Um, but I'm always thinking about things that I could do different and things I could change. Um, but my my fault is I'm awful at executing those things because I have a million things in my head that I want to do. The premise of the book is to take something out of the whirlwind. So you've got a whole bunch of things you're working on. This is the machine. This is the things that you have to do every week. Every week I have to prepare a lesson. Every week I have to get small group bins ready. Every week I have to make sure all my volunteers are scheduled. These are the things that you have to do, right? And you're just kind of keeping it afloat. It's the whirlwind. Well, what this book encourages you to do is to take one or two things out of there. Okay, so volunteers and the way we do small groups. And you pull them out of there and you're like focusing on working on those things. You're getting them nice. You're getting them you're getting them uh, fixed up so that when you put them back in the whirlwind that they're well-oiled machines. The, the two wigs, as we call them, wildly important goals that I'm working on in the youth ministry are retention rate and uh, class sponsorships, which is what we'll talk about here in just a second. But the premise of it is uh, scientifically, or is that a word? I mean, I know that's a word, but um, I think that's the word I'm looking for. They, they've, they've done research and they say if you have one goal, you're going to hit that goal every single time. If you have two goals, you're going to hit that goal, both of those goals, pretty much every single time. If you have three goals, you might hit two or three of them. If you have four goals, you're only going to hit one. If you have five or more, you're going to hit zero of those goals. You're going to reach zero of those goals. So that's why it's so important for us to, to take those things out and to work on, on those for a period of six weeks to six months and, uh, and to focus on those. So when I talk about getting organized, you might hear all these other things and think, I want to do all those things, I want to do that. But if you're not organized, it's important to focus on that um, first before you, before you get going. Uh, second thing, number two, uh, how do we reach children throughout the week? Web, web presence. Web presence, okay? Uh, now, not everybody can have like a sweet website because we're all, um, a, our website is a product of our church's web platform, uh, so I know how frustrating that could be sometimes, um, but on social media, that's like open season right there. Uh, um, parents are on social media all the time. It could be awesome to like, you know, actually have a little bit of an encouragement coming from your page on social media, especially in the past few days, um, and uh, utilizing social media to actually um, do a couple of things. Number one, obviously, to promote events. So, hey, we've got this thing happening. Hey, you should think about getting plugged in with children's ministry. Hey, 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 all these different things happening. But the, the one thing that I would suggest is uh, churches are really good at promoting their events. 
um, and we're not super good at encouraging people um, on our social media because I mean it's we we can sometimes treat it like a business and that's okay and I'm not saying don't promote your events but make sure there's a good balance because if, if all it feels like to your uh, to your congregants and to your parents is that you're you're take take taking and like oh you need to come here and you need to give the the camp scholarship fund and you need to you know invite your friends to here but you're not saying man did you know that you're awesome hey I know that maybe some of you had a hard time getting your kids. Uh, out of the house for school today, but man, you are an amazing parent. And just little bits of encouragement like that, you can do the little pictures, all that kind of stuff. Web presence is huge. A um, couple websites of churches, again, I'm not saying go and copy them exactly, but if you need like a uh, like a template or just an idea of, of what good ones look like, uh, New Life Church in Renton, it's nlchurch.com slash kids, and then uh, River Valley uh, assembly in Minnesota, I want to say, Minneapolis. Is that right? Perfect. Um, they have uh, an amazing website as well, rivervalley.org slash kids. Um, yeah. And keep your websites up to date. I know that this is like, you're like, okay, this isn't what I came to, came to hear. We're going to talk about how we get in contact with kids here in just a minute. But the, the websites, man... 90% of people will go to the website uh, for, for more information. 90% of first-time guests will look at your kids' page. If it's not up to date, man, it, it can be a, a, a huge hindrance to your growth. Um, number three, um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one more that's a pretty obvious thing, um, and then I'm going to get into some maybe that are, are new to you. The, the third one, and a lot of curriculums in, include these types of things, is give students something to take home. Give them something to take home and bring back. Uh, Noah, our children's pastor, we do something on Wednesday nights called uh, Life Treks with the entire church. So we've got middle school gathering happening. We've got uh, adult classes happening, and he's got kid treks happening um, with the elementary age kids. When I was a kid's pastor, I'm not going to lie, I tried everything in my power to kill Wednesday nights. I hated it because it was another night of the week. I was trying to do school, and I just like, wanted to go home and not have to do, uh, be there for a ministry that had like 10 kids there and give my, give my night up for that. And uh, uh, when Noah took over, he like hit the ground running and that was one of the things that he's like, no, we're going to do this awesome. And I'm like, good luck, see you man, like have fun. Um, but he has like totally revolutionized that where they've got like 45, 50, 50 kids and the reason used to be the reason that the kids came was because their parents were there. But now the reason that the parents come are because the kids are there That's and the, the kids want to come. So it's really cool. And one of the reasons is they have, I mean, their award system, right, where um, they earn different things. But one of the ways that they earn that is they have take-home projects and, and they have to have their parents sign it in order for it to count. Now, that does two things. And number one, gets the kid to actually do what you give them. And number two, it gives parents an opportunity to say, Oh, that's what you're learning. Okay, now let's talk about that. What do you, oh, you, you learned about David and Goliath because that's the only one that can come to my head right now. You learned about David and Goliath? Tell me about that story, right? And then all of a sudden, parents are actually pastoring the kids like we want them to because I don't need to stand in front of a, a room of children's pastors and help you to understand that, man, children's pastors, directors, volunteers, that, man, parents are the key to uh, the spiritual development of, of kids. Um, Couple ideas for you. Um, our, uh, we just launched a, a campus in Centralia, and our kids guide there. His name is Jordan McKinney. He uh, brought into my office on Thursday, or I guess Wednesday. He's like, "Hey, I've got this idea," and he brought in a placemat, like a dinner placemat. It was laminated, had all the activities on there, um, where you can like use um, washable markers and that kind of stuff, and do the activities, do crosswords, erase them, that kind of thing, and. Uh, he says, well, I'm thinking about doing these once a month, sending them home with kids, so then at dinner time they can, you know, do these activities with their parents. So placemats is a good idea. Visor cards is what, I think he calls them visor cards. He probably had a cooler name for it. Um, but basically something where you clip on the visor of your car, um, and then uh, like a little devotional thing that he would post online so that parents can see it when they go to bed. Because uh, in talking with, I mean, a lot of kids pastors and, and youth pastors and lead pastor, if, a lot of people, period, the times that you have the most um, uninterrupted time with your kids be driving, 
dinner, and right before bed. So if you, you take those and you ma figure out ways to maximize the, uh, the way that parents interact with their kids during those three times, you're on the right track. All right, um, number four is uh, connecting children to other children. Connecting children to other children. Man, I heard that you love Pokemon. Oh, Pokemon's the devil. No, I heard you like Pokemon. Um, I, I know this other guy who likes Pokemon. It's your first time here. I want to introduce you to him. And they all of a sudden like hit it off. Oh, you seem to really be loving this video game we have set up. Can, is, it, is it okay if this guy joins you and they become best friends and they want to hang out and, and do play dates and all this kind of, kind of thing? Um, the other thing, too, is uh, part of that, the getting organized. What time am I supposed to be done? I'm sorry. Is it uh, 11.30, right? 11.30, yeah. 11.30, okay, perfect. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm going to give you guys ample time. Um, the part of the being organized and um, having databases is you could actually, you know, place on a map, depending on how many kids you have, of where each kid lives. And, uh, man, you can connect kids who, who live close geographically, who go to the same school, um, because a lot of times they, they go to the same school, they see each other, but maybe they don't even know each other, so you can, you can meet them there, and then they're having lunch together, and then they, their friends are having all lunch together, and how do you guys know each other? Oh, we go to church, I want to go there, that's awesome, right? And um, they're, because their connection is church, they're ministering to one another throughout the week. Um, same, along the same lines, number five, connect parents to other parents. Um, parents are the, the first pastors and the first responders to their kids' um, issues and celebrations and everything in between. And so it's important for us to, to elevate them. Uh, if you haven't ever read or looked into Reggie Joyner and the Think Orange philosophy, uh, man, you have to. Like, uh, That's another resource. If you forget everything I said and you've never heard of Think Orange, get on that because it's a... Uh, it's amazing philosophy. I won't go into explaining it too much because I feel like um, a lot of people have a grasp on it. But um, there are some. There, there will be some parents or some kids who come with a grandma or who come with a friend, a neighbor, right? And their parents aren't believers. And so, how do you um, how do you help those parents succeed in ministering to their kids if they don't believe in Jesus themselves? Uh, you have to be prepared to provide surrogate parents. Um, and this is something that's uh, true in the youth ministry as well. Um, it, I feel like it's a little more true in the youth ministry because they can like drive themselves a lot of times or um, they come with their friends and their parents are more fine with them going with people that they don't know as well. But being prepared to provide surrogate parents, I don't have a way, like I don't have a magical, like here's three ways to do that. I wish I did. If you do, please like let me know because I'd love to like, try to implement it in, in our church, but um, providing surrogate parents is huge, where, man, you've got uh, a dad who is getting ready to, like, take their son out camping, and there's a, another kid who's, like, one of their friends. You can nudge that dad, hey, I mean, I know that you're going to do this, but do you ever think about taking uh, another guy or two, another young man or two, um, and providing those opportunities for, for kids to have surrogate parents? Uh, again, geographical connections. Um, if you have parents who are solid or leaders who are solid, adult leaders who are solid leaders, um, and you know that they're in a community group, um, connect those parents to one another. Say, man, you guys should join in your community group. When I was a kid in Tri-Cities, my parents had a community group at our house. All the adults met, like upstairs, we live in a split-level house. All the uh, adults met upstairs and all the kids hung out downstairs. And uh, those are some of my closest relationships up to this day, um, where... I got to hang out with these kids for, you know, an hour and a half every single week, and that, you know, there's no spiritual aspect to it. We're playing, we're probably playing Halo Combat Evolved or something, but um, we we gained our relationship. We we grew our relationship through that. Um, providing helps. So uh, you have a, again, you have a dad in ministry, and you have a, a a single mom, or you've got a family who is like in huge need of a of a hand uh, moving across town. Man, if, if that person goes and helps them, that's awesome. So providing ways for parents to connect with one another. Um, the sixth thing, number six, uh, grade leaders uh, or class sponsorship. 
This is, uh, I talked a little bit about this earlier with our wildly important goals. This is a thing that like I'm living and breathing and doing at this moment in time in my life in ministry. Um, and class sponsorship is essentially this. You have uh, a number of adults, depending on how many kids you have in your ministry. So we have uh, like 140-ish in our youth ministry. So we've taken and we've said we're going to take six adults per grade. So six adults for sixth grade, six adults for seventh grade, so on and so forth, all the way up to uh, seniors in high school. And those six adults are going to be completely and wholly committed to the spiritual formation and the relational formation of those uh, of those uh, students in their grade. We have like, I mean, like 15 to 25 students in each grade. Um, and the reason is, uh, if I wanted to go to a, to a bunch of soccer games with, for like my for the kids in my ministry or the students in our ministry. That's like an impossible task for me to try to do them all, right? And I feel like I'm missing out on all of them. But if I say, hey, you six are and you, you're like in charge of this grade, and they they like really really own that. And maybe you've got three gatherings, so two can do this gathering, two can do this gathering, and two can do that gathering. Or you've got two gatherings, you can kind of split it up where they're not even serving every single week or whatever. Um, man, could you imagine the like the relief that they would feel um, and the the love that they would they would have for those kids because they can actually focus on you know three to five kids. Um, and the way that we do it is we have we have two couples. So that's four people that are above the age of 30. And then we have two young adults who serve as well. With kids ministry, you can even get the high schoolers involved and even middle school if you're talking nursery or, or um, early childhood. The, when, my, when my pastor and I were talking about doing this, I was a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but the thing that like, made it like, okay, I, I actually can do this because I was talking with Eric Brennicke this morning about like, kids ministry volunteers and how easy and totally awesome it is to like get people involved and it's like you just like wave your hand and say hey i need volunteers and everybody just runs to you right is that how it works no, i'm just kidding so like i mean uh and every, you guys are like seriously you have no idea uh, <laughs> that was a joke my sarcasm is a little dry um but uh you you, you think about like the need to recruit more volunteers and are like, okay, I'm out. Like, I can't. I've already exhausted all my resources. I don't have any idea what to do to, like, make this any better. Um, but what he said to me, my lead pastor said to me is, check this out. All you got to do is recruit one couple and say, hey, you have a chance to build your dream team. And then they, they go out and they recruit their best friends and they recruit a couple younger people who they want to mentor and they want to love. Now, obviously, you want to approve that and, and make sure that their like, gift set is, is working together and that their, um, their personalities are not going to be all the same because then kids might not relate with them. Um, but I have like... I, so that means, I think, let's see, six times seven would be... Come on, help me math. What is it? 42. So if we had six times seven, that's, that's in our, our middle school and high school ministry. That means 42 new leaders. There's no way I'm going to be able to recruit that many people. But if I say, man, I'm going to recruit seven couples, yeah. okay, I can do that. I can do that. I can meet with a couple, uh, couple of couples, two couples every single week, and you know, half of them may say no, half of them may say yes. And by, by the end of the year, I'm going to have all of those grade leaders on on board and then they're going to be recruiting their friends because who doesn't want to do ministry with the people you love right like right. the the reason that you come to fusion is um because your husband makes you um i'm just kidding the reason that you come here is because you want to connect with people you want to be re-energized and you love doing what you do with the people you do it with and that's what keeps people along and that's what creates longevity um i talk about you know my heart to I like grew up and I had geographical ADD because we moved a lot and like I just want to move all these different places and and even when I started at Evergreen like I was like okay I can I could be here three to five years and like I was thinking that's an eternity though and now I'm coming up on well I guess I just passed four years uh, being at Evergreen and I'm like 
I hope they don't fire me because I really love this place and like I want to be there and the reason I want to be there and the reason I want to stay on board is not because it's easy. It's not because it's like the uh, everything is just already made and it's just I come to work and I just you know have coffee and lunch with people every day and it's just super easy. It's because of people there that I have relationship with and I love doing ministry with. Um, so yeah. That is grade leaders, class sponsorships. And the reason I say that that's one of the ways you minister to kids outside of Sunday mornings, um, so I can actually connect the dots to why you're here, um, is those grade sponsors and those class sponsors, they actually become the the pastors in your ministry. And uh, they will be uh, the people that your kids are most excited to see on Sunday mornings. Uh, They will be the ones that have an opportunity to, to go to their birthday party or to their their sporting event or to their whatever you fill in the blank. Um, Final thing, and this is a super practical, super easy thing that you could probably do on the way home as long as you're not driving. Um, Anybody here have like subscriptions to like Spotify or iTunes Music or you have like some some sort of subscription thing? Or how many here have a like playlist that you have that you choose worship songs from? Anybody? Sweet. Okay. Perfect. One of the ways that you can, really easy ways that you can keep kids uh, engaged in that kind of stuff throughout the week is um, make, if you have Spotify or anything like that, uh, make a Spotify playlist and send it out in an email or on social media or put it on the website like, hey, here's some of the worship songs that we sing on, on Sunday mornings that you can play in your, your car for your, for your kids or on the iTunes, Apple Music is what they call it, Apple Music. Um, subscription. Uh, if not, um, as long as you have the rights, uh, there was one point in my time where I burned songs on CDs and apparently I didn't have the rights, so I got in a little bit of trouble for it. I didn't know, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, make sure you have the rights to these different songs and you can actually burn uh, copies of CDs or get copies to sell um, for parents to put in their car rides and um, give them something good to listen to on the way home. So, um, All right, so we have... 18 minutes. Anybody have questions or comments or anything like that before I give you guys an opportunity to to workshop this at all? Perfect. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Um, the next 10 to 15 minutes, um, let, let's say 10 minutes. I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes because I'd like you to share a little bit about what you're thinking, uh, if you're all right with that. Um, Get together, if you're here with people from your church um, or from your group, get together with those people in this moment and workshop ways that when you go home, you can, uh, you can implement them within the next six weeks to three months uh, and you can start working on those now so that that can be a reality uh, then. Ways that you can minister to kids outside of Sunday morning. I'm not asking you to create something new for your to-do list. It might mean you're recruiting people, recruiting someone to actually run this and operate it. Um, whatever that might be, uh, just begin to workshop. If you're here by yourself, um, I'd encourage you to even like get together and create a fake scenario. I think it's more valuable if you're able to create a real one. Um, a fake scenario or a real scenario in your own, by yourself, um, whatever you guys think. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? All right. Ready? Go. Perfect. Let me know if you have questions.